Okay, hi Alicia, how you doing? I, I have your um, work open here, but I also want to open this right here, your writing. So I want to address this as well. So let's say, let's take a look. You have um, this week I updated and looked at my portfolio template by changing the design from the um, name to just my initials, which I think that's a good idea. I also added a border frame to the page. I think the overall look is pretty good. Um, still adjustments it made. Overall, I think it's coming along nicely. So uh, does the portfolio have to be a standard size? No, it does not. I know if a recruiting agent wants to print my PDF, it'll print easier 8.5 by 11. I can pretty much uh, guarantee you that nobody's going to print your portfolio off. Um, that's why you have e-portfolios, so that people can share them without having to print them out. So don't worry about that. Um, the only concern you have about the size of your portfolio is if you want to create a book. Now, if you were an on-ground student, if you were an on-ground student, a book would be required. Um, it's it's recommended that you um, have a book in, your, in the online class, but it's not it's not required. So the the uh, PDF portfolio is required. So that's why we concentrate on that. However. You, you do eventually want to have a book, so you'll have to start looking into what sizes of portfolio books um, would be acceptable for you. And then that would be one of the decisions in what size you want your, your pages to be. Cover letter and uh, resume. I'll give you my honest interview. Uh, interview. My, uh, I just saw that word interview. I'll give you my honest opinion and my, and my honest critique. And, um, okay. I hope I addressed everything in in your writing. So let's jump over to the to the work, okay? And I'm seeing this. This is a this is really smart and and it's good. And I'm going to tell you why. It's good because it, you immediately are showing this page and and you're uh, you're showing that you understand that this is your brand, okay? This is your brand on your business card. This is your brand on your portfolio page. This is your brand on your resume. This is your brand, you know, okay, so you understand that. We understand that. Now it's a matter of of preserving that brand through your portfolio presentation, which you do beautifully. So very, very good work. Very good work. I couldn't ask for more at this point, but I will continue with the critique. So um, let's just jump in here a little bit. This is good. Uh, one of the questions I would ask myself is, uh, okay, with this bleed, meaning that that, that um, logo, that shape is going off the page, meaning that when you um, print your business cards, your letterheads, um, and your envelope, well, you're not necessarily your envelope, but, it'll, but you're, what's going to happen is it's going to end up bleeding off the page, and they'll have, these will have to be trimmed. Um, so you know that. Okay, let me just back down here a little bit. Um, one of the questions I would ask myself if I were looking at this as a student portfolio, I would say, does this student understand that this bleed right here is going to add considerable cost to this, this whole package? Okay, food for thought. I'm not saying don't do it. Just saying think about it. You've got your cover letter here. Okay, the relationship here. Um, you've got some good typography going. Try using some sans serif in there. Try to mix it up a little bit. Your cover letter, um, I want you to go back into the class and take a look at, um, let me see, there's, um, where was that? The, go back into the class on that, or that, that section on, um, on cover letter and just take a look and see what, what's going on because you have a couple of mistakes here. Uh, this is a critical mistake um, to whom it may concern. Um, there's no date on your letter. Um, you're you're actually really close to the margin here, um, and, and I think that there's another critical mistake here, and it's asking the interviewer, asking the person who's going to read your cover letter to 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 contact you. In other words, you're giving your contact a chore, and you don't want to do that. Okay, so let's take a look at the actual presentation itself. All right, now I've noticed that you placed, and you mentioned about placing this frame around. And what I'm noticing, and Alicia, you're, you, you, I want to tell you this, okay, it's a really common habit for, for student designers to want to box everything in. Um, there's boxes around everything. You have a box on your business card, a box on your letterhead. Um, a box on your resume page, and I, it 
goes on and on. Um, if we could just want to continue, there's, there's, okay, there's your boxes there. Here's your boxes here. I'm just seeing um, that, you know, that's something that, that, that seems to be what student designers automatically want to do. I want you to get out of that habit by, by not putting things in boxes. It actually works against you. Like this right here for your letterhead, the AR is just fine. This box really doesn't serve any purpose, Alicia, because what it's doing is, is pulling your type in and, and squishing it, making it feel constricted. Uh, no breathing room. So there's, there's no reason for that, okay? Um, other than that, um, you know, these pages are going to look a lot better without that, that, that box. So good job there. Good work there. Um, the, uh, this skill summary here, it's centered. I don't know why this row doesn't, here doesn't just align with the rest of the bullets on that. That kind of threw me a little bit. Um, This, okay, since this isn't a major heading, you have professional experience, that's not a major heading, so let's indent that a little bit, That's or otherwise change the type, um, or something just to, to indicate that that's a, a subsection of that right there, maybe indent to the top of those bullets. Um, other than that, you're looking good. You've got a different type here for your education. That's not needed. I would stick with the same kind of um, type. Uh, these look great. You've got, um, right here, you've got a direct mailer and a magazine cover. And then over here, you've got a postcard and a brochure. But both of your mailers are only the front cover, the, only the front of the mailer. So my suggestion is take these mailer, this direct mailer and this mailer postcard and um, design the back front of them, the back side of them, showing the mailing side. And design it. Don't just throw a label and a stamp on it. Actually design it. I think it will be... Um, uh, a nicer presentation than just having the backs showing. Okay, uh, piece, this piece looks good. Looks great, good page. This pic, this is wonderful. This, this is great, I love this page a lot. And this page right here is a little distracting because of this thing in your, I think that's very distracting on the background of your website, I, I really do. Um, I mean, I know there's not much you can do about it now, but for future reference, don't get me wrong. Your work is gorgeous. I got no problem with your work here. This is just lovely. Um, lovely little portfolio. What you got going here? Um, okay, I'm going to cut it off there and uh, just keep working hard. You mentioned you had some other things, but um, just keep working hard. Work on your grid and uh, everything's going great. Very cool. Thanks.